So I had to wear the shirt that Soap and Clay Kidlet number two got me again because we are making a bar based on the character that she was named after. Well, one of two, right? Because my second kid, both of her names come from women in literature and or, you know, video screen things that I love very, very much. I think they're very strong women, very independent women, fiery, passionate, smart women. And uh, the first one, her first name, is the character that we're making today. And I will tell you, you know, what that is, even though you can read titles and you already know in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 224 of 365 days of soap, and today we're making Addison's soap, Addison Montgomery Shepherd. And as I said, Soap and Clay Kidlet number two, her first name comes from this character, because she's amazing. Soap and Clay Kidlet number two, obviously but also Addison Montgomery Shepherd. Now, for this scent, we picked out Naked in the Woods from Wellington, and I'd never smelled this, but I was really hoping that it would be very, very complex because that's definitely what Addison is, and it delivered. It is a delightful blend, absolutely, and complex would be the best way to describe it. So, let's go to the video. We can talk about my thought process, why I chose the design that I did, and all the things, you know, where we usually talk about it in the video. Hello, uh, happy Tuesday. In Addison's bar, we are using Naked in the Woods by Earthly Body. I have no idea what this even means. I've never heard of Naked in the Woods in my life, but I think it's a candle from what we learned during the whole picking of the, the scents. And these are the colors that I'm using for Midwest Soap, from Midwest Soapery. With the exceptions of the, oh, there's so many colors that go into Addison's bar, you guys, because it's complicated, okay? Addison is a complicated creature. She came from the New York things, okay? So those are her New York buildings. And then she moved to the Seattle things. And then she moved to the Malibu things. And so we had to capture all the things in one bar. I don't know how it's going to go. Let's find out. Actually, I, I do know how it's going to go because I, I made this a long time ago. And spoiler alert, it's awesome. That's that's all. But yeah, again, to the except with the exception of like bath bombs, wherein you can't use the blues and the greens from Midwest Soapery because they are not approved for bath bomb usage. And I talked about why I think in yesterday's video, if not the day before, probably the day before. I don't know. Um, where that was the case, we moved to other micas. So primarily Midwest's micas were used for the entire Gray's line which is cool. And I love that. And I also love Addison Montgomery Shepherd, or just Addison Montgomery. Just, just leave her as Addison Montgomery. Cause that's ultimately what she became or what, I mean, that's what she is. She became Addison Montgomery Shepherd. And then, you know, she went back to what is as Addison Montgomery when her and Derek Shepherd 
officially divorced and she moved to Malibu and she did all the cool things there in private practice. Another series that if you somehow are into Grey's Anatomy and also have not watched any of the spinoffs, I think there's just been two to this point. Private Practice was the first, and it introduces Amelia Shepard in really big, awesome, cool ways, and also fully develops Addison's character. And for the other one, the Station 9, 12, 5, Ben's spinoff. He, I haven't watched that one, so I don't know. But Private Practice is a good one, so definitely watch that. And if you guys like station insert number of the station here and think I should watch it, then also let me know that. But for my part, I am telling you watch Private Practice if you like Grey's Anatomy. And also, I'm whipping the bejesus out of this because this recipe is my swirls recipe and it's very, very slow to trace. Let's go pour Addison. So on to the pour of this and hold on, hold please. Why are you making noises? It's always making noises. Sorry, continue. So the pour of this is, um, you know, city skylines, so New York meets gray wetness, Seattle, meets beach, which is ultimately where Addison really did find herself. And that's where her character development fully came into, hey, I'm a whole person. And I acknowledge that. And I'm cool with being a whole person. So yeah, we are mixing beach and city skylines and gray and cloudy in, in one bar. But also, the gray and cloudy is incorporating some parts of the out of the woods from the actual, the, the scent, the naked in the woods, because that was weirdly a part of her, well, like a, like an episode part, multi-episodes, I guess, of her literally living in the woods in Derek's camper, hating it. So, but also to that, the Pacific Northwest, it's rain and it's trees. That's it. That's all. If you ever wondered, that's what we are. We are rain and we are trees. And we have an abundance of both. Like lots of both. So that was the thing. So I've laid down like the beach and now I'm gonna do the ocean. And um, Addison's bar is going to continue to be uh, created. So Addison Montgomery Shepherd is a very cool character, okay? Addison, like, showed up at the end of season one looking like a dime, just walking in, gorgeous, so put together, and has a conversation with Meredith, who, you know, while still gorgeous, just came off of, like, a very long shift of being an intern in a surgical internship. So she's kind of looking like a mess. And then Addison's like, oh, you must be the one that's sleeping with my husband. Bomb drop. And then we find out through, you know, the next season and whatever that Addison was actually the one who cheated. She did it first. She did it with McSteamy. I'm not even going to say spoiler alerts anymore because we're almost at the end of all of this. Also, why am I a disaster? Why is it that everything I do just results in spilling on the counter? Also, also, interestingly, I was like, oh, my swirls thing. Had to beat the bejesus out of the first layer so it would set up because it's my swirls mix. That's also true, but for the rest of the soap batter, because it was taking so long to trace, I just walked away from it <laughs> for like 45 minutes. Like, I forgot about it. You guys, I forgot about the soap. You've been there too. Whatever, don't judge me. And so when I got back to it, kind of thick. But we're still going to make it work. It's still going to be awesome. Just like Addison. But, you know, the scent is doing a reasonably good job at 
I don't know, making this quasi-fluid long enough to get through the pour, I suppose, for the rest of the soaps that I made for the Addison Bar. I did not leave them for 45 minutes, but you know, so much of this channel is literally showing you this. So I guess it's, well, what happens when you leave a soap for 45 minutes and just forget about it mid-pour? Nothing. Nothing terrible. It's still going to become soap. I could, if it were overly thick, I could have taken this and just put it in a piping bag and done some weird piped soap. I mean, there's only like an inch of batter in the actual mold right now, so it would have been a really weird piped soap. But I could have done so. Could have maybe, you know, started a new technique. I don't know. Point is, if you forget about your soap batter, eventually it's going to get thick. So, don't... I guess maybe this is another lesson of a do what I say, not what I do. But again, as a spoiler, the soap still looks awesome. Another spoiler. It's beautiful. Because Addison is beautiful. And also, this is a very hard, uh, like, video for me to even get through. Because I am continuing to say the name Addison. And I already told you, my second child, Soap and Clay Kidlet number two, is named after two fictional characters. One being this character. And the other being Scout from To Kill a Mockingbird. Two um, strong female characters that I very much wanted my child to uh, model in life. Uh, I found strength in them. Scout, obviously, when I was a child and read To Kill a Mockingbird. And uh, here's the thing. I know that To Kill a Mockingbird is coming under fire again and being canceled. Like, literally in my own state, a school district has taken uh, To Kill a Mockingbird off of the required reading curriculum for high school. And that part doesn't bother me, like, at all. I don't necessarily think that teachers should be forced to teach... Well, I can't actually say that teachers shouldn't be forced to teach anything. I There should be a curriculum. Um... Does To Kill a Mockingbird actually make that list and make sense in 2022? I don't know. I have opinions and they are not actually for this video because in this video we make soap. But the point is, um, even saying the name Addison reminds me of my Addison. My Addison Scout. And so it's weird because in actuality, I associate the name Addison with, you know, my kid who is named after this character more than the character herself. But the character herself is amazing. And for the Scout bit, as I said, it's not for this video or for uh, this channel. But yeah, no, I've, I have opinions. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go on to the cut of this and, uh, see what the Addison Montgomery Shepherd bar looks like after a good C-pop and gel, because I do want to see what Midwest Soapery's colors do in the soap, you know, now. I'm not changing that title screen. It's just going to say A. And this has been C-popped and gelled. And also, for the record, because I like to keep all of this transparent with my sudzers, I re-recorded the last bit of stumbling, bumbling chaos nine times this afternoon. I, I, I can't, uh, whatever. So, like, yeah, no, this is actually a weird thing that's actually weighing heavy on my 
weird mind right now. So I'm sad right now that I, I, I can't just talk about these things, but I'm not going to. I'm going to talk about Addison Montgomery Shepherd and the awesomeness that is this bar. And that's it. And it is a beautiful bar of soap. There's the ocean with the Malibu and the city skyline with the gray mixed in with the colors of the Pacific Northwest, which are green and gray and black and white and gray and rainy and also so much green. So much green. I have not experienced this much green since I went and like visited the, the South when I was a child. And I'm like, what's all of this? You guys just have trees that stay green year round? Weird. And then I moved up here and I realized, oh yeah, no. The Southwest, specifically, you know, Colorado where I lived, we, we don't experience that. But everywhere else in the country gets some level of that. So that's awesome. And uh, these bars are great. They are beautiful. They are gorgeous. Uh, I did not talk a whole lot about Addison Montgomery Shepherd in this entire thing. And for those of you that wanted my opinions on Addison, I will, will just refer you back to what I said at the beginning and what I'm going to say again. She's awesome. She's a badass. She saves tiny humans. And that's amazing. So amazing that I named my kid after her. So it was a big deal. But the bars themselves, I think this is a perfect representation of all of the journeys that Addison Montgomery Shepherd went on in her life to become, you know, where we left her in private practice. Being awesome and strong and independent with a free mind capable of making decisions for herself. Like the uh, woman that I, or the person, the human, not even woman, because I have no idea what Scout's going to end up with in her life, just being the human that I hope she becomes, which I have no doubt she will do. And that is day 224. The Addison Shepherd Bar. And there it is, Addison Montgomery Shepherd's Bar. And yeah, it's a cool marriage of the beach and the woods and the city and all the things everywhere where she, you know, was. And she ultimately found her place in the beach, raising babies and doing her own private practice thing. And that's basically where we left her. And I love that for her, for sure. I was very sad when she left the Grey's Anatomy world, but she went on to do her own spinoff, and she's amazing. Everything about her is amazing. It's why Soap and Clay Kidlet number two is named after her. For real. I'm not kidding. That That's why she was named that. And as a weird aside, seems like a lot of people, because Soap and Clay Kidlet number two was actually named while we were living in Los Angeles, and then we moved up here a couple months before she was born. And then a few months after that, we're going to the parks. And there are like nine Addisons at the park. So apparently it's a very popular name in the Pacific Northwest. Probably because Grey's Anatomy is stationed here. But you know, whatever. It all works out. And I love my Addison oh so very much. I also love Addison Montgomery Shepherd. Not nearly as much. If you are interested in getting any of these soaps that we've been doing for the Grey's Anatomy line, yeah, you can't do so yet. They're not available. They will be very soon, as soon as all of the soaps and balms and all the other things that we are doing for the Grey's Anatomy theme are done. We will be releasing them at SoapandClay.com, so look out for them then. If you're interested in seeing, you know, who else we do to finish out the Grey's Anatomy line, subscribe. That would be cool. For those of you who are subscribed, hey, thank you. You're cool. Thank you so much for joining me for another round of 365 Days of Soap. I'm out of here for today. But I will see all of you guys again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.